Hey everybody, welcome to week six of CS201. I apologize for the sort of inconsistency with the release of these uh, weekly videos. Um, I normally record when my son is at his mom's, uh, but with our new COVID schedules and uh, she just found out she was exposed to somebody who may have tested positive. So anyway, uh, point being, I'm with my son a lot. So uh, while he is in the back, hopefully will not come out here and uh, interrupt, but if it does, it's fine. Point being, We'll try to do this a little bit more regularly, but this is not my normal workflow at all, which is probably true for a lot of you. So some information for last week, grade scope. Um, some people have been getting a lot of failed tests and wondering why, um, and you know, you're still getting full credit a lot in a lot of cases, but not in all cases. Um, and that's because I'm a human and I can actually see your code. I can see what you did and I know why grade scope did what it did and I can figure it out and give you credit for the things you actually did right. Um, so you're always gonna be graded by a human being. However, um, if you want that sort of satisfaction of knowing that your code works correctly and getting those grade scope tests to actually come back as, as you know, valid or whatever is passing, um, one of the things I've noticed a lot is people are putting a testing code in your, in your you know, Python projects. Um, and so that's, that's great, it's always good to test. Uh, but if you test, try to just print out values and then just send values directly that you've chosen to your functions. The way that we write, the way that Gradescope works is we load your code into um, a sort of a larger project where we have additional code that we then use to check your code. It's called unit testing, you don't really have to worry about it. But the idea is that when we load your code in, if you have user input stuff, or you use that input function, the input function stops execution immediately and waits for a response. But all of our tests actually just send values to your functions directly and check the results against what we expect it to be. So point being, it stops execution and then your tests end up failing because they just time out. Um, and so if you want to make sure those things get through and that they pass the tests, even though I can still see your functions and I know if your functions worked or not, but you wanna have that satisfaction of knowing um, don't put input functions in your tests. The other thing is last week you probably got a 60 out of 70. That's because my test number seven is completely, it's not completely borked. It's just the, um, I have two United States in my data accidentally and I don't like changing it while people are still submitting stuff because I've had an issue with that once. Anyway, I'll fix it for next time. But if you get 60 out of 70, you got a perfect score. Um, that test seven is wrong. Uh, anyway, so that's grade scope. If you have any other questions, feel free to just email me and I can help you out with that. Uh, this is also gonna be our last week of sort of conceptual stuff. We really haven't been able to double up on weeks because you can't skip conceptual stuff. If you skip conceptual stuff, it's gonna be impossible to do the application stuff. The way this class sort of works is it's six weeks of sort of conceptual stuff and then four weeks of real application. Since this is a summer course and it's shortened by two weeks, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna double up on our application weeks. So next week we'll do the equivalent of week seven and week eight, but I'm going to eliminate one of the two assignments because I don't want, life is hard enough as it is in 2020, I don't want you having to do like double the work that you should be doing. Because this class is designed to really be something that is useful for you in your, whatever your field is, whatever career you choose, um, you know, for computer science majors, we would probably go into object-oriented programming or, or more conceptual stuff. Here, we're cutting that short. We want you to be able to actually have a skill. So it's, we're gonna do a lot of stuff where we sort of read into files, parse large amounts of data, um, manipulate it in some way, and then res return some sort of result, either another file, a CSV file, or something like that, because that's what people need to do at this point. It's, I have a ton of data about you know, patients in a hospital, or I've got tons of data about, um, you know, fish that I found uh, of various types, you know, out in a river or something. Whatever your chosen field is, whether it's biology, medicine, uh, economics, you have this huge amount of data and you need to find out some way to sort of parse it and process it to come up with some meaningful results. And so uh, that's gonna be the real focus of our last two weeks together. Forgetting all that, what are we gonna do in week six? Week six is all about manipulating strings. The first part is pretty simple. It's just using format strings. Format strings essentially allow you to put in little placeholders into a string and then just say what the values of those placeholders are at the end so that you can format a string in a way that's perhaps a little bit different. Now you could still do the exact same thing with the cat, cat, 
the, concat the concatenation operator that we already know how to use, or any of the other methods you've used to sort of display strings out. Uh, but we wanted to talk about format strings because they can be kind of helpful. The second part, and really it's the, the second two explorations, kind of both center around this central concept of regular expressions. So what a regular expression is, is a very specific set of, of characters and symbols that represent a pattern that you want to match in something that you're reading in. So uh, maybe I get a string from a user and I wanna make sure that uh, this is a valid email address, which is I think a common example that we use in the explorations. Well, that's gonna be a series of letters and numbers followed by an at sign, followed by another series of letters or numbers, followed by a dot, and then followed by either com, edu, it's a, actually, no, nowadays there's lots of different top level domains. So we're gonna say anything but, you know, another set of characters at the end. Point being, we could check that pattern to see if the person is entering a valid email address. Um, regular expressions can be used to check lots of things. In fact, if I just have a huge amount of data in a huge file, I could go through and say, hey, I wanna pull out any, um, any token that matches the pattern uh, three digits, you know, zero through nine, uh, followed by a hyphen, followed by two digits, followed by another hyphen, followed by four digits. If I did that, I would effectively be checking out this entire file and pulling out all of the social security numbers and maybe putting them into a separate file, which now that I say that out loud sounds kind of nefarious, but we're, you're not criminals, we're fine. But point being, anytime you want to pattern match and pull something out, it's helpful. Um, and especially when you're parsing large amounts of data, regular expressions can be helpful. Now here's the thing. Yes, you should memorize regular expressions and that, and that pattern matching and those symbols and what they all mean. And I should have too when I went to college, but I'm a you know, semi-professional and I've been doing this a long time and I have a master's degree and I still keep a cheat sheet with me when it comes to regular expressions. There's nothing wrong with that. This is an online class. Find a cheat sheet, create your own and you know, it's gonna be available to you. Like, regular expressions, they just look kinda of complicated because you're trying to pattern match something very specific. Um, and so that's, there's no shame in keeping a cheat sheet. I would recommend it. I think you should, I do, I think most people do, um, unless you work with regular expressions on a regular basis. So, yeah, your assignment this week is really just gonna be essentially taking in, um, like we're gonna pass you office numbers I think the story is um, you got bought by some big company. If you're an engineering office, you're being moved up a floor, which essentially means adding 1,000 to the digit part of your, of your office number. And so what you have to do is determine whether or not this person is an engineer or not. Um, engineers have three letters followed by a space followed by four digits. If the office number matches that, then you add 1,000 to the uh, digit part and then return that new address which is the same office but one level up if it's not three numbers or three letters in the front or if it's not four digits at the end then it's not an engineering office and you just return the original string so uh, sort of a simple use of regular expressions but that's your assignment um, and if you need help you can always send out an email or check out my office hours um, which I may move because I feel like when, that one week when I did them on Friday afternoon, it was actually more popular, but we'll see. Anyway, um, if you have a comment, feel free to send me a message or something and I'll, I'll see, you know, we can rearrange office hours whenever. I thought that evenings on Thursday would be popular, but maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, um, so that's it for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a Canvas message and um, yeah, I will see you online.